Hello, this is another one of my videos summarizing Alistair Parker's short introduction to the Second World War. This one dealing with the economy of Britain during the war. This is from chapter 9, which is very long, so I've subdivided it into a number of separate videos. The Western Front against Germany depended on Britain's survival. And after 1940, the British economy relied on the United States for support. In 1943 and 1944, the Americans provided over one quarter of the munitions used by British Empire forces, most of it for free under the Lend Lease program. Raw materials and tools for British industries and food for the people were also supplied. Britain was thus able to reduce exports to a much greater extent than would have been possible if imports had had to be paid for uh, to about one third of pre-war levels by volume. By 1944, 55% of the British population was either in the armed forces or civilian war work. Without loans or gifts from overseas, the British could not have imported all the food war supplies and materials for manufacturing war supplies. Their reserves of gold and foreign currency were exhausted by the end of 1940. The British war effort was limited by the relatively small size of the population. Overseas aid through gifts and loans from the United States, Canada and the Empire enabled them to accumulate sterling balances and so increase the proportion of the population that were involved in waging war. Pre-war, the engineering industry had employed all available skilled workers, but during the war it both rearranged processes so as to lessen the need for skilled workers and hastily trained unskilled men and women to replace its former workforce. War lessened trade union objections to these changes. Whilst registered unemployed had numbered 1,270,000 in June 1939 before war broke out, by 1944 this had been reduced to 54,000. Much of the growth in the labour force came from the redeployment of women, 2 million of whom started work or moved from domestic service between 1939 and 1943. Despite these accretions, losses to the armed forces meant that there was a shortage of healthy men able to do very heavy and arduous work. Eventually, the Ministry of Labour organised a ballot among men due to be conscripted to the armed forces, a proportion of them to enter coal mining. These were the 22,000 Bevin boys named after the Minister of Labour. Uh, this was a far more unpopular uh, option amongst the men than military service, a reflection of the sources on the sources of morale. Mine workers lacked the prestige of men in uniform, and 40% of the men chosen questioned their selection and 143 were actually imprisoned for non-compliance. By the end of 1943, the British economy had reached its limits. Any further increase in the numbers of servicemen would lead to less war production, and any more weapons would mean fewer soldiers, sailors and airmen. Although the British did employ about a quarter of a million prisoners of war, mostly Italians, as extra labour, they didn't uh, employ forced foreign labour, as in Germany. By the end of 1994, some army units in France actually had to be broken up to provide replacements for others. The British economic war involved allocating labour between the military, war manufacture, and the production of goods and services for civilians. The Minister of Labour, Ernest Bevan, was given authority to require anyone over 16 to register for directed work by Act of Parliament. 
on the 22nd of May 1940, but he was reticent to use these compulsory powers, issuing only one million such directives. Most people moved to war work voluntarily. Those who were direct directed were mostly assigned to building and construction work for camps and airfields. Workers in essential war industries were not permitted to leave their jobs, nor could employers dismiss them without official permission. This is Ernest Bevin, British trade union leader, labour politician and statesman who was Minister of Labour and National Service from May 1940 through to May 1945. Thereafter, he became Foreign Secretary in post-war Labour government. The British government's mobilisation of its population for war work was more effective than any other. Like the British, the Germans allocated just over half their population to the armed services and war work. But unlike Britain, the German government used foreigners for civilian production, so freeing up German labour. British uh, labour productivity was significantly lower than in either Germany or the United States. In 1944, comparative productivity was calculated at 41 for Britain and 48 for Germany, taking the United States as 100 as the base. Canada, by this comparison, uh, stood at 57, the Soviet Union at 39, and Japan at 17. These differences were not due to differences in work ethic, but mostly to the use of capital equipment and effective management. The idea that the British workers were self-indulgently idle is a myth. Uh, as for example, a comparison with the lower figure for Japan, where people work very hard. So thank you for listening, and particular thanks to my patrons for their kind support and encouragement, without whom I wouldn't be able to make these videos. You're very welcome to support my channel if you want. Uh, like, comment and share on the videos, ring the bell button, all of it helps. Subscribe if you want to be notified of future videos. I'll give Patreon and PayPal links below if you want to provide practical support. Next week we'll talk about the economy of the United States. Have a good day.